<laughs> well, that's good. That's a good starting point right there. I'm laughing at myself because I'm yawning profusely. I'm pretty sleepy, pretty tired, I'm finding this morning. And as I was setting up, I do all my sound checks beforehand. And I put on some uh, little bit of metal. And I was like, I just want to listen to metal. <laughs> so I might be uh, starting from a, a bad spot. Well, I don't want to say bad spot, but... It's funny to me sometimes when I am just like tired and uh, and all I want to do is just put on the loudest, heaviest shit I could find. And somehow that matches my mood of being sleepy and tired. I don't understand it, but it's true. It's a thing. Now, with this album, by No Worries, Anderson Pock and Knowledge, Why Lot. Uh, I believe I'm going to be expecting the opposite of the loudest, heaviest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> That's what I've been led to believe. Uh, let's see. This album came out on the 14th. It is currently the 29th. So this is two weeks ago. Uh, if you're seeing this, it is now after the 4th of July, although I'm recording this before 4th of July because I'm going to be busy that weekend. I hope everyone enjoyed their holiday if you had it off and I uh, hope you didn't set too much shit on fire. Well, I mean, set some stuff on fire, right? And blow some stuff up. It's America, 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 right? Gonna blow some stuff up and burn some stuff down on accident. I hope we stayed off the roads. I will never, ever, ever drive on the evening of 4th of July again. I did it, the last time I did it was like four or five years ago, and it was the worst mistake I ever made. I was like, at one point, I was like, I'm, there's no way I'm making it home. There's so many drunk drivers on the freeway, there's no way I'm making it home. It's just the odds <laughs> are too great. Anyway, there's that weird tangent. Um, when it comes to this album, I only know one thing, and that's people are praising it left and right. A lot of praise I've been seeing for this album. When it comes to the members that make it up, no worries, Anderson Pock knowledge. I don't know any of these guys. I've heard of Anderson Pock. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. I apologize if that's if that's incorrect. Um. He has, he has an album, he's got a couple albums, uh, but all these guys have a couple albums, let's kind of look at them, but what is it, Malibu, I think, people have mentioned that one to me before, although that was a long time ago, they haven't, it hasn't really come up in the last year or so, but basically all that to say, I'm walking in blind, so it's, it's a 19 track album, 44 minutes, a couple of these tracks, looks like they're just little skits and stuff like that. That's kind of cool. Some short ones, 70 seconds, 80 seconds, 90 seconds. Kind of neat. I am I, always very curious to see what an artist can produce in, in such a small window. And sometimes they it produce just pure magic. Uh, I found three music videos that will be Patreon only. Patreon's two bucks. You can listen on MP3. No ads. No cuts. So there's that. And um, yeah. I guess without much to say, might as well drop in, huh? Kind of a short opening thoughts, but there you go. Sometimes that's how that happens. The first track is called Thank You. It's featuring Dave Chappelle. The producer is Knowledge. It looks like it's a talking bit. So let's listen to it. We'll keep it in mind. And then I think I'll let it roll into track two, which is called 86 Centra, produced by Knowledge. Are they all just produced by Knowledge? Uh, Thundercats in here, that's cool. Looks like Knowledge is the producer throughout. <clears throat> and we will verify as we continue. All right, here we go. Dropping into Why Lot by No Worries, Anderson Park and Knowledge. Uh, track one, thank you. Here we go. Uh, you know, my mood is already turning. I was already talk, you know, talking about wanting to listen to metal. This is already like cheering me up. If there's one word I've always hated, it's the word deserve. Whenever I see someone less fortunate than me, I say, there but for the grace of God, go I. Go I. I could have been that nigga. Thank you, God. Huh. Thank you for letting me get to be what I got to be. That's kind of cool. Neat concept before we roll into the album. All right, here's track two. Nickel nine gripper for all you jack rippers. The driver inside got a license. 
as they hit you. Hop up out the pot and get your top huh. rhyme licked up. We survive shit. You can only catch a whiff of. Locked in way before the top ten when I had the money. Like a little hesitation the there. Brim on a different way that I came in the game on when I levitate, grab my sneakers and hang on. Couple of missing knowledge in the motherfucking. And we can go to so anyone you know, younger or they get drove in the hearses. I just did the Super Bowl halftime show with the goats. Why the fuck what I wanna do with verses? That's like comparing team ball to the MLB. Y'all out of your league, we not the same person. Uh. I be doing this till I'm about 86. So this a bitch holding my dick fucking on the nurses. <laughs> oh, it just rolls right in. No. Oh, cool. I like it when albums do that. They just roll right in. Uh, let me click on this annotation about the Super Bowl because I'm aware of... Uh, uh, so Pac performed at the Super Bowl halftime show with Dre, Snoop, Kendrick, 50 Cent, Eminem. I didn't realize Anderson Pac was in there. That's cool. That's very cool. You know, and of course, it makes perfect sense to have these lines after this little intro of just saying thank you. Thank you, God, for letting me be who I got to be, you know? It's always great when you see an artist, or anybody for that matter, who's successful in what they're doing, really embrace the treasure that is being successful in what they're doing, because it is a treasure. Not everybody gets to, I mean, we all love the idea. It almost seems to be like, uh, preached in this country that if you try hard enough and you put in the effort and this and that you'll make your dreams come true it's not true it's not true i mean yes if you try hard and you put in the effort you will see success but if your dream is really really high depending on what you're trying to do it doesn't mean it's going to happen nothing is guaranteed especially if you get into anything that's you know competition related you want to win a gold medal in the olympics and you get bronze that's still an incredible accomplishment right but you didn't get the gold your dream didn't come true well, there you go you know <clears throat> so i love it when anybody who's doing well just embraces that success for what it is what is nickel nine gripper for all your jack rippers what does that mean Park friends are having a smith and wesson 50, smith and wesson model 59 okay Okay, I don't know how that. Okay, I don't know anything about guns, so I'm just gonna trust that one. <laughs> trust that one. Young, but I still got sons in the game, but they they not like the one with a dot, and it's got to be K dot. I don't know. They're saying so the the annotation is a K dot reference, possibly like question mark with eight down votes. So this is wildly disagreed with. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it's because Anderson Park has a dot in his name. Yeah, that's probably it. But not like the one with the dot in his name. So he's probably referencing himself there. <laughs> anyway. I think it's easy to assume K dot in this time frame because of everything that's been going on with the beef between him and Drake. Just like monumental, historical fucking beef, right? So anytime there's even the slightest reference to Kendrick, people are just going to gravitate towards that uh, assumption, I think. Once we let off this track list, that shit gonna blow your chest off. When the last time you heard a sound this hard? Compliments of knowledge and the motherfucking yes love. We can go toe to toe, anyone you know, young or old, and get drove in the hearses. Okay, okay. I'm not gonna really lay into these lyrics too much. Feels like that's our opener with the intro and the track there. Track three is called Move On. I like that track two dumped right into it. We got three seconds in actually. Producer's knowledge here. Let's jump into track three and see how Move On plays into this album. Ah, this is cool. Very cool. I love the really light head drums. Guitar in there. Ah, oh, this sounds great. This sounds great. I can't find the beat. 
I feel so stupid. <laughs> I'm trying to move around. I'm like, I don't know where the beat is. This is cool. This sounds fantastic. It's so subtle. So soft. Such a great layering of sound. There's a lot happening with the sound, but it's all layered in just right. Nothing's overpowering the other. Just really well balanced. Ah, oh, that's a beautiful song. Beautiful song. Yeah, that one gets a heart for sure. For sure. Okay, let's look at a little bit of lyrics here. Pretty quick song, not a whole lot of lyrics. That's fine. Nothing wrong there. I've seen things that'll make a man go crazy, but that don't phase me. I can't go within. I can't go within. What is I think he says, but that don't phase me. I can't go insane. Okay. 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 Either way, so the annotation is questioning the lyrics written here. There's one downside with genius. They're not like official lyrics or what people interpret when they're listening and they punch it up manually. So let's let's try it with can't go insane. But that don't phase me. No, I can't go insane. No way, no way. So much pain running through my veins. I know they want to break me if they go out that way. No way. I can't do the things that I used to. I can't move the same way I used to. I can't do the same. No way, no way. I wonder what this annotation says. Let's see. A little bit longer. This is a double entendre, which is telling us that both his physically, his physicality in general and his ability possibility to score women is not the same. Okay, why women? I wonder why it's, they're saying specific to women. I understand it's further down the path of life. He can feel that in his body. His life has also changed due to children and fatherhood. The major theme of No Worries' first album is the partners and situationships of Pac. Some might argue that he was moving too wild back then. And with this album, it'll be exciting to see how he's navigating through the next chapter. Okay, so, okay, all right. So, okay. <laughs> Somebody pray for me. Devil, get away from me. Open the gates. Let me go back to a safe place somehow, some way. Money and fame got them crowding around the table. But who are you going to stay when you ain't got a dime to your name? Hmm. I like that second verse. I like the first verse, or the chorus, too. Uh, I'm just not sure exactly what he's referring to, but that's okay. I don't have to know everything. I don't have to know it all, you know? Cool song, beautiful sound, nice and calm. Different style, you know, listening to these guys for the first time, trying to settle into their, their presentation a bit. Beautiful sound. And I kind of like how this one is more of like a, a thought, I was gonna say like thought provoking, but just, just almost like a meditative type thing and then the sound going with it just being elegant soft well balanced it just lets the mind kind of roll around a little bit you know this thing that might be weighing on you might be troubling you you can just take it and just just let it roll around a little bit kind of like uh so there's this place fort bragg california northern california coast and they have a, a beach called glass beach i won't get on into all the details but basically they used to dump a bunch of broken glass there back in like the 70s and stuff. And over the years, as those broken pieces of glass got pushed onto the shore and rolled back by the waves over and over again, those shards, those sharp edges, got rounded out and smoothed off. And now they're these just beautiful glass pebbles on the beach. And they're beautiful. And it's cool. So it's kind of that thing. You know, sometimes you have something in your mind that's bothering you, you're thinking about it, but you put on some music and you just let that idea roll around a little bit. Maybe it helps take some of those sharp edges off. Doesn't cut so bad. Let's go to track four, which is called Keep Her. It's featuring Thundercat. Looks like track four will be the longest off of the album at a whopping four minutes and 14 seconds. Also known as the intro to any Tool song. <laughs> right? Uh, Jesus. Producer's knowledge. Uh, excited to hear some more Thundercat. Here we go. Track four, Keep Her. Money won't keep her. Money won't keep her. Money won't keep her. 
Oh, I wonder if Thundercat's just gonna sing and not play the bass. He's gotta play the bass. Come on. Ha ha. I like that they drop the music right there. There's no more words to say. But goodbye. This is great, man. This is great. Great sound, so calming, soothing. Thundercat is doing great, I love it, I love it. I like the delayed bitch in there. <laughs> Looks like there's one more verse, but I was thinking this opening verse. You know what they say, you're going to pay either way. <laughs> and if this was made to be it's such a love dream, why you want to make me up? This line right here, you're going to pay either way. It made me think of that uh, South Park episode where Butters opens up his kissing company and he starts pimping. <laughs> and there's that one scene where one of the characters is telling Butters, you know, what he's doing is so bad and awful and people shouldn't be paying for kisses and blah, blah, blah. And then he's all, look at Stan. Look at Wendy sitting there telling him all about his stupid motherfucking problems. He's got to sit there and listen to that shit. <laughs> he's paying. He's paying just like anybody else is paying. Sure, the other fellows might be paying money, but, but Stan's paying too. He's got to sit there and listen to all his stupid motherfucking problems. <laughs> It's hilarious. You're going to pay. Either way, you're going to pay. Now, I don't know if that's specifically what they mean here, but I certainly thought of that episode when he said that. I think like this is kind of the opposite. Like, this is a little bit more of a heartbreak, heartbreak, right? You drove the knife to my pride. No more words to say but goodbye. How are you going to compare me to this guy? You know, this whole idea, you're supposed to be with me, put that on the Jesus piece on the cross, you needed peace, then spent the week in Greece, phone off, said you were asleep, I know you was getting your cheeks beat. So she's off cheating on him. You know, the money won't keep her. Hmm. Huh. It's kind of, let's keep listening. I don't want to say too much. Just yet. There's one more verse, but let me soak in the sound a little bit more because I'm trying to, I feel like I feel like I'm misunderstanding the uh, the song off on the surface. So let's keep listening and see if I can pick up on it. When you say you're losing yourself to me, you used to love when I sweep you off your feet, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches are great. I'm glad I waited. I'm glad I waited. Because initially I was a little confused because it's this almost like mournful, remorseful idea of the money won't keep her. But that then implies pretty strongly that the only reason why she is there is because of the money and therefore not you, which hints at something pretty serious. Then you get to it in the final verse. You say you're losing yourself to me. You used to love when I'd sweep you off your feet. You you bring out the worst in me. The side no one wants to see. I can see why I drink so much. So I won't dig into that too much. I don't want to... 
force my idea into the song. But the idea, no, no, the money won't keep her. It, the reason why I feel like it comes off as sad is maybe it was like this hopeful idea of, okay, this relationship isn't going to work out. But I, I love her. I want to I want to be with her. I want to spoil her. I want to take care of her. But it ain't working out. Well, maybe maybe she'll stay because of the money. But no, she's not even going to stay because of the money. Or for the money. So it's just that that kind of angle. It seems to be, anyway. You put the pain in my eyes. There's no more tears to cry. I'm all dry. I pack my bags. <laughs> but if you don't mind, let's make love one last time. Then goodbye. <laughs> How about a quickie? Before you dump me. <laughs> uh, track five is called Looking. It's 58 or 54 seconds, so pretty quick. I think we'll let that roll into Where I Go, which is track... S oh, I was on the wrong tab. Wait a minute. Where's, oh, I was on track. Oh, I'm all mixed up. Track six is Looking. Here we go. There we go. Instrumental. And then Where I Go, featuring her, who is another artist I'm unfamiliar with. <clears throat> so I'll let... Track six, we're one to seven. Uh, here we go. Let's let's drop into six. Direct distractions. Oh wait, no, no, no. Keeper. I'm all fucked up. I am all fucked up. We just got done listening to Keeper. Track five is distractions. I'm ahead of myself. Here we go. Distractions. Where the hell is this? There we go. You you never think I've been doing this for three years, right? <laughs> Looking like a damn rookie on this right now. Okay, here we go. Track five, distractions. Uh, let me change the thing around, otherwise Spotify is gonna get cranky about it. All right, here we go. Dropping in track five. Track four gets a heart. Keeper is great. Great song too. Very beautiful. Although I suspect that's gonna be the experience for most of this album. Why Lord is it is is a little interesting that pops up. I was staring at the cover here too, just two goats in the hills. And then I was like, well, how come there's just two? Shouldn't then there be three? And then it made me realize I think no worries is not is no worries a person? I don't think no worries is a person. I think no worries is a band name. <laughs> and I think the band is Anderson Pock and Knowledge. <laughs> I just now Probably figured that out. I think I figured that out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, sometimes I'm a little slow. There you go. I apologize for that. You know, something I... These last, those last few tracks have been fantastic. I, I really enjoy, like I said earlier, how sometimes these artists can crank out these songs that are sub two minutes. And they're just perfect. Just these quick little things... You've got the beautiful music, lyrics punch through, they're saying what they need to say, and then they move on. You know, I, I, I really enjoy seeing artists exist outside of like that standard space of time that you're supposed to have for a song, you know, the three minute, 30 seconds ish around there so that it's radio friendly and we can, we can crank through. It's really neat to see somebody do something and, and stretch it out and it goes nine, 12, 14 minutes and it's successful. Or the other side, two minutes, minute and a half, and it's successful. To me, it's an indication of just artistic uh, ability. Because that's not easy to do, in my opinion. 
cool song. I don't need no more distractions. I'm, I'm gassed to see what might happen. One pass of Grammy Ax, two grasses filled with old fashioned tree leaves, and oh, I don't know what that is. Drinks and see what you I got sent. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. For keeps, I play with my Reese. I don't understand that line. My bitch a little freak. She plays like Candace. I don't know that. Sick mind. I think I need counseling. Severed ties. Eight balls. Bad habits. Nine lives. A sphinx. No catfish. Tin man. A heart is what I'm after. Ha. Huh. Hope 12. Don't stop me. Try. Yeah, as I go through this and I'm, I'm somewhat confused, it does start to strike me as... It's like just these scattering thoughts, thinking about this, thinking about that, thinking about this, thinking about, and maybe it's more so driven by what you're what you're seeing. Oh, this, you know, that's how I am. Like if I don't see it, I forget about it, type of a thing, in terms of things I I mean to do or intend to do. So this almost feels like this verse is just this uh, scattered thoughts that are happening throughout the day as you're being distracted by the different things that you see and. You remember you need to do that, or you forget you gotta do that, or <laughs> all the shit that's going on. Counting on you, you're counting on me. Numbers don't lie. When the truth is a lie, it'll set you free. Let's click on this. The previous verse has Anderson counting up from one to 13, yeah, and a very clear or clever scheme. He doubles down on the counting here in the chorus. Okay, okay, all right, sure, sure. Can't on you, can't on me, never so, yeah, okay. Yeah, cool song, cool song. So then it drops into, and I was gonna mention this whole why Lord thing. I have forgotten why. It's almost as if I was distracted. I was distracted by the song called Distractions. Mm -hmm. It's a conspiracy, they're trying to suppress me. <laughs> okay, now now we're where I thought we were. Track six is called Looking, it's short. We'll let that roll into track seven, which is Where I Go, featuring her. So let's drop into track six, see what we got here. Don't know the sample, nothing new there. It is very rare when I know a sample. Sounds cool though. I feel like this is just a beat that Knowledge came up with. And they're like, well, we gotta do something with it. Just throw it in there. New music. New shit. I ain't ready yet. Let that rock again. Come on. Huh. Nice. I love these little just drops right into the next one. This already sounds amazing, too. I'ma hit you up. I had to go and find a running mate who didn't rush. I hope you know it was imperative. She wanna know where I've been and who I see. She wanna know where I'm going huh. and killing me. She say I'm so. This is great. This is great. Like it's just one of those songs where it's it's so pleasant to listen to. It's so fun to listen to. Like it, I feel stupid for pointing it out. <laughs> type of thing like like yeah it sounds just so easy to listen to i want to know what was in the envelope i'm very curious now you know left a little something special in the envelope had to mail you something that's at the door let me know you know when you open it, i hope you get hysterical i had to share it with somebody i really trust so when we celebrate i'm gonna hit you up had to go i like this line a lot i had to go and find a running mate who didn't rush I like that a lot. A running mate, of course, being like politics, you know, like your vice president pick or something. Like so your running mate, someone who's going to be your partner through this endeavor, who is not in a rush. Obviously, the you know, if you're running, you're rushing. Good little play on words there. Just a clever little line. I like that one. Hope you know it was imperative for the both of us. God, great sound. Super chill. Super, super chill. 
Let's keep going. Like, I want to, like, read ahead. <laughs> so let's just keep listening. This is great. Know that you my motherfucking cinnamon apple. Know that when it come to loving you, I'm a natural. Know how much it hurt me. That's in the past, though. I know I'm all alone. Better not be with that hoe. Oh, I had to deal with your sides and your pieces. I put two and two together in the sequence. I promise that I'm trying not to be on defense. But I'm reminded of it every time she you leave. She wanna know So only three minutes, two men. All right, I'll pause. Pause here. I don't know if there's going to be any kind of theme running through this album. Um, but on the verse that her has done. Know how much you hurt me, but that's in the past. So when I'm all alone, better not be with that hoe to deal with your sides and your pieces put two and two together in the sequence I promise I'm not trying to be on the defense but I'm reminded of it every time you leave and that is interesting to me because we had a song a couple a couple tracks back called keep her you know the money won't keep her and I wonder how if if any of these are gonna tie together I'm not gonna force anything right now you know we got a song about being distracted uh, 86 Centra it seems to just be Anderson celebrating a bit. Got this song about moving on. You know, I'm curious. I'm curious to see. I, I almost I feel like something might be starting to coalesce a bit in terms of the broader concept for the album. But you don't know. Don't know. Don't want to. It's always a difficult balance between trying to lift something from the album that's that is there and trying to you know find that versus not forcing my own idea into it it's a difficult balance <laughs> sometimes i get so excited about my own idea they're like that's what it's about and no no it's not <laughs> cool song though you know that looks like that's one of the singles this is this one has a music video um i think even this one was out like something one of these has been out for like a year where i go yeah Daydreaming has also been out for a year. So this album has been in the works for a while. And I wonder how much was pieced together before... I, like, I wonder how long it took for each track to come into existence before the whole album was complete, you know? Huh. Okay, well, we'll just, we'll just keep this idea, some of these ideas in the hat for now. We'll move on to track eight, which is called Daydreaming. Producer's Knowledge dropping in. Track eight. Great sound. It's super chill, man. God. Let's throw this on in the in the afternoon. There's a nice breeze hanging outside. Underneath the balcony. No you was mine. Good driving music too, with the windows down and stuff.
good shit, man. Yo, know, honestly, as we're going through these songs, I'm finding this album a little challenging to react to because it's so easy to listen to. It's pretty pleasant. Um, the lyrics are pretty straightforward. Like, there's not a whole lot to break down, which is one of the things that makes it work so well. Like, this is just, just so easy to take in, easy to enjoy, easy to process, easy to hear. And so I feel I feel a little odd because I don't want people to think, oh, you know, he's just sitting there. I mean, I am just sitting here, right? But I'm not like bored or, or anything. Like that. But like, it's just one of these albums, man. Where you just put it on and you don't you don't think about anything. I mean, you do, but it's in this sense of your mind just wandering off on its own. It's not like these controlled, specific types of thoughts. It's almost the opposite of. Uh, the song distractions where it seems like he's being distracted by like this one it's you have all these different thoughts but it's not from distraction it's just because your brain is like relaxing you know you you just you you slip away and you think about this and you think about that and you think about this but it's not from a distracted point of view it's from a relaxed mental state that's what this album is doing it's super cool but i do feel when it comes to what i'm supposed to do specifically i feel like i'm not necessarily reacting <laughs> just pretend like maybe i should have like a like a graphic over my head where you can see all these thoughts floating around and stuff right? i think for the music video when i was setting up the music videos i think this is the one where he's like on the beach or something this album is perfect beach music perfect it's afternoon there's a light, nice offshore breeze you you know you're not busy you're relaxing you can hear the waves like this this music is perfect for that kind of or maybe you're driving around with the windows down you know kind of in a somewhat busy area so you're only going like 30 40 miles an hour your hand out the window like this is perfect for that kind of shit perfect good stuff man good stuff Daydreaming when I met you, never met you. That really stands out to me. I don't know what that means. Maybe he's just like walking, watching some girl walk by. Girl, you're so fine, shine like a diamond ring. Look when the eyes tell me you would die for me. No, he knows her. I, it's, I get the impression that he knows her. That's why that line throws me off so much. Never met you. Hmm. Yeah, good shit. Let's keep going here. What do we got? Oh, this has got uh, the old Snoop Dogg. I'm aware of Snoop Dogg. And October London, I am not aware of. Uh, but this track is called From Here. This is track nine. Uh, all right, here we go. Let's drop in. Track nine, From Here, featuring Snoop and October London. Huh. God, it's just cool, man. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I need to, like, roll a joint and start smoking. of this song. This section is so great through here. I love this. Worst thing that can happen to a man is coming home to an 
make your bed. But I beg to differ. I say the worst thing that can happen to a man is if his lady gets up and changes the locks and puts all his clothes on the front door. <laughs> and now she's nowhere to be found. And now you have nowhere to go. What do you go to? What do you do? Ha. Huh. Yeah. It's the story of a man. You may know that man. Man, oh man. That's life. What do you go to? What do you run to? Who do you go to? This is great. I honestly, you know, I was expecting to hear, you know, a verse from Snoop, but I'm glad I did. I'm glad he just has a little bit of a spoken word part. I was going to say earlier, right before his verse came in, I was almost positive. I was like, no, don't pause it. <laughs> don't pause it. <laughs> just let it play through. But I almost said, like, this This album's starting to feel like just this almost like delightful heartbreak, happy melancholy. You know, I, I know that doesn't make any sense. It's very contradictory terms, but it's one of those things where it's like, Sometimes, oh, what is it? Oh, Fiona Apple. Fiona Apple. Not About Love. Beautiful. If you've never heard that song, go listen to Not About Love by Fiona Apple. One of my favorites from her. And it's basically about breakup and stuff. But uh, the, the, she has a line in there. I miss that stupid ache. I miss that stupid ache. It's so great. It's so great because th that's what this feels like. This feels like that stupid ache, but you miss it, but you love it, but it's, it's, it's painful, but it like makes your heart feel alive in a way. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that doesn't make any sense, but there's, I've, I've, I've started to feel like a, a theme is, is bubbling up essentially from this album. We're about halfway through. <clears throat> And it does just kind of feel like, you know, the joy of love and the turmoil of love and you miss her and you want her, but she's gone, but you can't have her. And, and like, it's just all this, all this other shit. <laughs> I do like the idea though, you know, worst thing that can happen is a man coming home to an empty bay. I beg to differ, or I flip the words around. I beg to differ. The worst thing I can do is a lady gets up, changes the locks to put all his clothes on the front door. Now she's nowhere to be found and you have nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. You know, verse two, I'm sitting in this car with my little heart in my hand, a little something in my cup. Back to back to back to back to back, slow jams. The little after three, I wish I had somewhere to be, someone to see. I guess I gotta face my fears, roll the windows down, hope the rain hides my tears. Where do I go? But it's also, it's presented in such a beautiful way, you know? Maybe heartbreak is easier when you're on the ocean and near the beach. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Maybe as your heart is breaking, you see another beautiful girl walk by and go, oh, this will fix it. <laughs> Who knows? This is great. That was my favorite track so far. From Here is beautiful. October London is crushing it. Crushing it. Love what's happening there in that chorus by October London. Fantastic. That's a great song. Great song. Uh, let's move on. Track 10 is called Fall Through. Uh, producer's Knowledge. From here on out, the rest of the tracks, there's a couple three minutes, but the, uh, the rest of the tracks are pretty quick. So this back half is going to zip through a little bit. We're effectively halfway through the album at this point. Which is just, I'm always a little curious to see that, you know, like how are they going to do it? All right, anyway, here we go. Track 10, Fall Through. Girl, that pussy like a sweet flower. Here we go. Here's the new girl. Or maybe it's the same girl. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, 
Let's go be free on your level. I got trees in my dress and drawing tea with the honey from the you gon' make me give you something. Some love, love that little bit right there. Dropped out for the production, but a little clicks from the drum. I didn't want to pause, but there's only a little bit left. But I just want to say, I, something I'm finally getting my, my hands on, my, rap, my mind wrapped around is, it's playful. That's what makes this so cool. Like, we listen to music, they play the instruments and, and all that other stuff, you know, and, and people make amazing music. This year has been great for music, in my opinion. There's been some great albums that have come out. Um, but this this album, this style of music in particular, is so playful, playful, and I was almost hinting at it earlier without realizing. You're talking about how I love artists when they take, they when they operate outside of that three and a half minute window. You know, I love to see what they do, and the reason why I love that is because it it is a display of artistic ability, but it's also playful. We're not forming a structure that we have to adhere to because of these reasons and blah. I mean, and this is broken down in the, in the verse and chorus and pre-chorus and sure, 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 whatever. But the music is really just playful. Like I feel like Anderson, as he makes this, is just loving it. Because you can almost hear it come through. You can hear the enjoyment of playing this music in the music. There's nothing... It's not rigid in any way. It's just free and light and fun. That's what's really shining through on this album. The vocals, even the vocals are different. Ah, and it's over. Yeah, that was great. Oh, goddamn. Fall through was amazing, too. <laughs> like, I knew there was only a little bit left, but I got sucked right back into it. I didn't want to stop listening. I, I was just in for the ride. It's taken me a little... It was just surprising. Like, I've enjoyed everything, but it's taken me a little while to, like, slip into this lane of play. Play. It's funny. First listens are always such an experience. The other day, yesterday, yesterday, I listened to uh, Bad Cameo, the new, um, oh my God, I'm totally blanking on it, which is funny. I literally recorded it yesterday. Uh, Lil Yachty, James Blake, recorded listening to it, the reaction. And there was something I got in there, lyrically, I had this idea, and this morning when I was listening to it, I was like, nope, I had that completely backwards. And it's so obvious, like when I <laughs> realize it. <laughs> But at the time, you know, I get all swept up and stuff. But every experience, usually it takes a couple tracks to kind of settle into what the artist is doing and stuff. And with this one, I'm just surprised at myself. Maybe it's just because I'm a little sleepy. I'm a little out of it. Surprised at myself for taking so long to settle into the just play. Just play. Have fun. That's what this is, man. This is just fun. It's fun with heartbreak. And love, like it's it, this is a cool album. I don't I don't really want to talk too much about the theme. Just yet. I feel like things are still coming to the surface in terms of, of of a kind of a general concept. Of, you know why love? You know you have to quit your job today. I'm gonna have to pay your car note. <laughs> we can skip the bar. Swat you in my arms all night. Hmm. Be free on your level. Hmm. Something else I'm kind of finding too is there's the lyrics are fairly straightforward. There's some that are a little bit more, maybe a little bit more hidden meaning, but I'm even finding myself not wanting to really like break down the lyrics because it, it is existing so much on the playful side. Let's keep going. Great fucking, great album. Great album. A couple more. What do we got? 10 more tracks, eight more tracks, something like that. Next one's called Battlefield, produced by Knowledge. This is three and a half minutes, so a little bit longer than the others. I'm really excited to check out these short ones. 
minute and a half, minute 12, minute 18. I, I'm really curious to see how those break down. But those are coming soon. All right, here's Battlefield. Here we go. This, this line right here in Genius is absolutely all fucked up. And you're, here's what the lyrics are written. And your heart begins to throw from yours being false spit. No. It's your heart begins to thaw from yours being frost bit. This is all fucked up. <laughs> right here, completely fucked up. Let me back this up. Maybe I heard it wrong, but that's what it sounded like you said. The lyrics are here are fucking way wrong. Remember when you used to hit my line on the whim? I forward to VM. You go and sing a hymn. When the lip gets sick and there's nothing they can fix. And your heart begins to thaw from years being frostbit. And the only thing you want is a woman for forgiveness. And I can't leave before the Dodgers win the pendant. She got a weed that's strong enough for the gripping. But I can't see us going on nine innings. Go on. From the start, we taking no shorts. They gon' remember if nothing else that the nigga was long winded. <laughs> and we live from the enterprise. Where you get signed, I have to improvise. Got me a bag and then I realize. Didn't need no cash to make me feel alive. Uh, this is a great song too, man. I'll support you if there's nobody else for you. Standing in the middle of a battlefield, I had to pick a side to be a victim of a tragedy. Another thing that's been so great through this album is the sound has been so soft. It hasn't been like a harsh edge, hard sound at all. It's just been so soft. Drops right in here. I am. This is a fucking great song. Oh my god, man. Oh my god. I love towards the end here. This, this, like, I can, personally, I can feel this. They're going to remember, if nothing else, that a person was long-winded. <laughs> As somebody who is long-winded, mm, mm, I can feel that. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Sometimes we just say a lot, don't we? <laughs> ah. And we live from the enterprise where you get signs or have to inter improvise. Got me a bag, and then I realized didn't need no cash to make me feel alive. I really, really like that line too. Didn't need no cash to make me feel alive. God, give me the strength, because now that I'm a man, my focus and interest is putting out these fires that started in 06, praying that the ghost of my past stay distant. I think this next lyric is wrong too. And knowing that the cards in my hand is the lyric they have written is goldfish i think he says go fish as in the the game go fish you know do you have this and you say no go fish i think what he's saying here knowing that the cards in my hand is go fish meaning you can't take my cards these are my cards these are mine you can't take this from me like you would take a card from somebody else in go fish i believe that's my interpretation I'll call it quits when y'all get off the dick. And if we all can't ball, then what's the point of it? Money getting long. I'm saving up for the kids. I always knew that I was be big as a clock. Sister, this might be wrong too. I don't know. I didn't really understand that part. Would ever think that we'd find a hole in the system. Remedy all the symptoms. Got a long list of things that I got to get to. But if I don't, just know it was all meant to. This is, they wrote pendant here. It's pennant. I can't leave before the Dodgers would have pennant. <clears throat> hmm. 
great song. The chorus is super fucking catchy, man. You know, I'll support you. There's nobody else for you. Standing in the middle of the battlefield, I had to pick a side. That was great, the way they were rolling through that. Ha. Huh. Remember when you used to hit me? Remember when you used to hit my line on a way my 40 to VM? You go and sing at him. When the liver gets sick and there's nothing they can fix and your heart begins to thaw from years of being frostbit. The only thing you want is the one for forgiveness. But ain't we all trying to figure out shit we witness? I feel like something happened here. Somebody got sick. Like basically there's a falling out in a relationship. Your heart went cold. You know, it froze over. Not going to talk to that guy anymore or whoever, right? But then they get sick. You start to thaw. They want forgiveness. You're trying to mend the relationship before the person dies, basically. Huh. Huh. Rim's got my tires rubbing like sunscreen on your bitch. <laughs> it's dark as the eclipse. They got the vaccine. But gonna make you wait for it. So go get your paper, kid. Huh. huh. Beautiful song. And I feel like there's a lot of like personal personal stuff written into it and kind of buried in there but it's still written in a way where the song is just enjoyable to listen to you know like I don't know I'm starting to just feel like why law the idea that the theme here is just life man you know why why has it got to be like this you know it's surprise it's heartbreak it's victory it's it's loss feels that way so far just so well done. This is a beautiful album. Okay, let's move on to track 12. Called Here I Am. Produced by Knowledge. This is one of the shorter ones, so I'm curious to hear this one. Here we go. Track 12. Here I Am. Ooh, you give me heartache, baby. I'm falling from the pain like a shot to my kidney. What a shame that we never seen you make. What a shame. I was supposed to take the vacation, but flaked on you. And uh, no one wants to hear my side of things. <laughs> my own mama called me <laughs> stupid when I broke the news. Use a fool to go and ruin up a good thing. I guess I had to lose to fully appreciate. And now I got to move because the lease is in your name. But I'm letting all the hoes know I'm single again. And I'm throwing a little party in DTLA. Got a brand new apartment with no roommates. Trying to start a clean slate, but it's hard to keep face. But I know I did you dirty. I just wanted to say, hey, congratulations to my for your shit. Every time they see me, they saw you. Everybody asking me, what the fuck did I do? Shit, I was actually cute together. What happened? Bro, I already told you. Why are you raising your voice? Man? Why are you just saying it up again? Oh, my bad. Bro, that's actually, that's actually the first time I brought it up. So that's what I'm saying. So okay, like, feel warm and shit. Obviously, <laughs> we're, we're, that's what we're here for. Okay, well, I, I, I'm, I'm fucking talking. <laughs> I love this. Why are you bring it up again? That's actually the first time I brought it up. Ah. <laughs> uh, ah. Uh. There's a couple of notes I just want to, I mean, pretty easy song to break down, right, to understand. But I was supposed to take you on vacation, but flaked on you. You know, mama called me stupid when I broke the news. You was a fool to go and ruin up a good thing. You know? This this really stands out to me. Went and got a young bitch, 21, dumb, thick, but she's dumb as a brick with shitty music tastes. My friend and I were having a chat once, and... You know, being in our 40s, the idea of dating anybody in their early... The whole premise of the conversation is like, what would happen if our if something happened to our wives and it's like we're single again? And it's like how completely uninterested we are in any of that idea. Like, no, fuck that. Because we were ranting and raving about how shitty it must be to be on like fucking online dating and just what a nightmare it must be. But then too, like... <clears throat> the... You, you see this shit like in Hollywood and in different entertainment industries, right? Like these older guys are dating these younger girls. And it's like, I, I, I don't think I'd be able to fucking handle it. <laughs> yeah. Like your, your interests are so different. Your own like personal histories in terms of like what you grew up with as a kid and what you're interested in, in you know, in terms of music and movies. Like, no. So I love this line about the person being dumb as a brick with shitty music taste. Because <laughs> that's something we were on. It's like, yeah, but they won't even listen to the same music. Like, no, no, I'm good. It's all right. <laughs> uh, 
I ain't doing shit, but look at on your page. I see you meditating, thriving, going places. Finally got somebody to take you on vacation. You know, so the person's doing what he flaked out on. I was hoping it was your friend taking all the pics, but nonetheless, congratulations. I'm happy for you. This song's called Here I Am. There's another one called Where Do I Go? Where I Go. This is just a, this is kind of a heartbreak album, but it's beautiful. I don't know. This is really, really fascinating, really enjoyable. Let's keep going. Track 13 is called Out of the Way featuring Ray Khalil. Ray Khalil, I'll say. I, I suppose. I don't know. Uh, produced by Knowledge. Did it actually start playing? Yeah, it did. Okay, let me back it up. Track 13, Out the Way. I fucking told you. I fucking told you. First song on the album where the music is a little different. The beat is a little harsher. A little it's almost it's almost like a headache. Almost. And I don't say that to criticize the beat like it's bad, I don't like it, but it is different. It's very distinctly different from this light guitar and these beautiful soft sounds that we've had up until now. And so I wonder if that kind of represents this, like this persistent thought, like almost a, oh shit. Not necessarily a headache in that, like a painful sense, but like a fearful realization. Oh shit, I fucked up. That, I actually, she is the one I want. Like, I told you, you know, I told you that I can't choose one, but I'm starting to think you could be all I need. That realization, this thought of, oh fuck, because we've all had something like that, right? Where we realize, oh, I fucked up. Uh, and now that thought is just kind of there. It's just really there and it won't go away. But I feel like the production is maybe mimicking that I, that concept, that like mental presence. Yeah. Oh, I like that little pause in the production. The second verse, it's never going to change. It's just as long as you're on my side. That's right. And I know that you say I stay way too far, but I know I'm getting close to your heart and ain't nothing going to stop me when I start. I'm wondering if this track is hinting both lyrically and in terms of the production, if it's hinting at you know, early in this album, throughout so far, it's all been fun and light and playful and you know some beautiful melancholy type of a thing. This feels a little more serious, both lyrically and with production. And so I wonder if the idea here is we're taking a, a bit of a turn and if the idea of what love was before was just a little bit more of a, a fun game to play and, and you fall in love and you get hurt and you miss somebody and your heart breaks a little bit, but then you find somebody and what, like just this fun little game. 
And now if we're here, maybe it's less of a game. Now it feels more serious. There's more weight to it. Maybe. Maybe. I'm really curious to see how the rest of the album goes because it'd be cool if it did that. It'd be really cool if it did that. Especially, you know, he's saying, I'm out the way, but then you pop up on me. No, every day you're on my mind. It's like you're all that I see. I said I can't choose one, but I'm starting to think you could be all I need. So there's, it feels like a serious turn here, but who knows? Who knows? Let's move on to the next track, which is called She Used. 15 called More Of It. The way the songs are spelled, too, is the titles are interesting. Look at where I go, daydreaming from here, fall through battlefield. Here I am, out the way. She used more of it. I don't know. I feel like there is a theme here. And I feel like I'm... It's like if you're looking for a fire and you, you find the smoke. There's, uh, I can smell the smoke. It's here, but I don't see the flames. You know, that kind of thing. I feel like that's where I am with trying to pick up on the theme. Anyway, let's jump into track 14. I think it actually started a bit. Let me go forward, back it up. 14, she used. <laughs> Love the sound here. Love the sound. in the vocals to make it sound like a sample a bit. Oh, that's the end of it. So I had a concept at the front half of this track that the outro blew out of the water. I, maybe, who knows? Obviously his vocals are very different here. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe this is being sung from the point of view of the girl. I understand it was my own fault. I had to find out for myself. All this pain can take its toll on the heart. But I don't do this for my health. Okay. Okay. Beat the pussy up, then I rub your back. But once I bust my nut, I feel so attached. No, I guess it's not from her point of view. No. Pull my driver, honk the horn when he steer past. Said I'd be back, but won't be mad if this time is the last. It's not from, yeah, so it's from his point of view. But I wonder if the vocals mean anything, the way it's pitched. Doors open as shit, I'll make my timely dash. Cheers to your music career, hope you go triple plat. No, we don't be playing your shit. <laughs> Call that the run in traffic, I guess that's what you get. Be careful what you're asking for. She calls me baby. Yes, she does. Oh, baby. Yes, she does. Hey, baby. She smothers me, covers me with love. It's the sweetest sound I know. I never knew I'd be so in love. I never knew I'd be so in love. I don't know what to make of this one. Hmm. Let's keep going forward then. The next one's called More Of It. I wonder if these two are directly tied together. I don't know. <laughs> There's so I feel like there's something here, but I also feel like I'm missing it. So here is track 15, more of it, Knowledge the Producer. We're gonna do it like this. Nice, nice. Magic City, we was throwing fun. But 
such a pity we was the only ones yeah. Conversations on the couch again yeah. From getting a dance to giving a counseling yeah. Chrissy, go on and hold this other stack yeah. And I say, well, bitch, I'm throwing bands yeah. All this love, I got more of it These only crumbs off the Wonder Bread Just paid off my mama more, more. But every week is she need more As long as I got the blessing I can always go get more, more. Just me, I got, I got more, more. Just paid off my mama more. Yeah. Son, I sense that you're feeling really down right now, and um, I wish I knew what to say, but uh, do you think you can call me back after the Dodgers game? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I think this this chorus, this track, more of it, I think this ties into Keeper. The money ain't gonna keep her. Every women had to take out more of it, just paid off a mortgage. But every week, yeah, she need more of it. And I mean, maybe that could be directed towards his mom, but I don't think so. I feel like these songs are there are there are tethered lines between these tracks. There's connections here. Maybe not. Maybe not. Hold this other stack, and I say, what bitch, I'm throwing bands. All this love, I got more of it. These only crumbs off the Wonder Bread. Put up my lung for my better half. As long as my soul got a dental plan. As long as I shine like my little man. I did see somewhere he has a son now. Was Oh, that was one of the annotations we read, like, first off, right? Brenda Park Bills. Is that his mother? I don't know. I don't know. I sense you're feeling really down. Call me back after the Dodgers game. You know, what, I don't remember what track that was, but they got to win the pennant and it's going all nine innings and all this other shit. I don't know. Let's keep going. The other, oh shit, did I just accidentally close that? I did. What did I close? What did I lose? Maybe nothing. Distant space. I, okay, we're good. I closed something on accident, but we're okay. Okay. This is called. I guess never remix, I suppose. I suppose. Featuring Charlie Wilson. I don't know who Charlie Wilson is. Huh. <clears throat> the other thing too that's tough, like, you know, pausing between tracks when these tracks are just going bang, 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 right, right through. So I'm really fucking up the flow of the album too right now. Anyway, all right, track 16, never remix. Never meant to do you no harm, I swear. Too, man. These cool these little songs they hit are fucking great. songs man I, I kind of feel like I need to apologize because I've just been sitting here quietly for the most part but these songs are punching through and they're all like they're all it's just these own little tidbits and I feel like this last bit where did I start where did I say that was it here I am or the I already forgot where it was now where the production changes and it starts to feel a little bit more serious this is all, all these little songs, these little tracks have just been like little tidbits of feeling heartbreak. 
Never meant to bring you harm, anything but let you down. All I gotta say, if it ain't too late, is I never meant to be, do you this shady. When I close my eyes, I still notice you. What do I say? What am I to do? Is it too late? Want more time with you? This is all just heartbreak. So the, the one that he actually wanted, the one he cares about the most, got away. Every day you're on my mind. It's like you're all that I see. But isn't he also married? I, I don't know. I This is something that's tough too. Is sometimes these artists, they'll write a story that's a parallel to their life. Sometimes they just write a story and it's not directly related to their life. Or it is, but it's from before. You know, you never really know where they're, what perspective they're writing from. But this, this back end feels like, yeah, it's... It's heartbreak. It was my own fault. I had to find out for myself. All this pain can take its toll on the heart. Yeah. Huh. I didn't really touch on the lyrics too much of more of it, did I? Magic City were throwing fun. Such a pity was the only one's conversation on the couch again. From getting a dance to giving counseling. Oh, no, I did talk about it a little bit. This one. Just paid off the mortgage, yeah. Sense that you're feeling down. You know, he's at the Dodgers game. Everywhere he goes, he thinks about this girl. Doesn't mean to do her so shady. This is too late, too late, too late. More time, more time with you, yeah. Huh. Well, there's one more track. And then the the final one is just an, an outro instrumental. Like 30, 25 seconds. So... We'll play this final one, Walk On By, featured Earl Sweatshirt, Ray Khalil. Um, here we go, Walk On By, fascinating. Oh, actually this one is still a couple seconds left, so I'll let this play out. Although it looks like it just fades out anyway. But here we go, track 18, Walk On By. Cool sound. I like these, when these guitar bits a lot. Sometimes what's harder finding happiness or family time in a loop it be the beauty with the tragedy behind no one has a clue what we had to do to survive uh, I love that do 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 I made lucrative ties, you in a bind. I'm not, so you feeling tight. Exuberant heights, the flight long. I'm too busy fried for you and your plight. Stupid advice I piled on you, it was frugal and light. Spent too many nights, booted, lived too many lives. Removed from the stripe, you was in tune with our rise. I rose, I suppose, what you doing with your nose and a white? Ain't nobody business but your own. It does feel a little odd hearing Earl Sweatshirt and his style and his presence in something that's kind of like, like if the song feels lighter and a little sunny. I mean, lyrically, it's not necessarily that, right? Like basically Anderson talking about, you know, people are dying meanwhile I'm having the time of my life. I feel guilty inside, you know, when you talk words cut like a knife. Like lyrically, this isn't like a happy, cheerful song, but the music is a little light. It's so Earl, man. Like, he is so dark. <laughs> He's got that weird, like, echo effect going on. He's talking about being high. <laughs> I'm, too, I'm too busy fried for you and your plight. I'm high for real. It's just... Anyway, there you go. It's kind of cracks me. Like, I immediately think of I don't like shit. I don't go outside and all that. Which is a very different sound from this album. <laughs> very different. It got you chasing the same old high. You can find it. Love the guitar work on this one. The guitar I feel work is like great. Huh. 
and it's gonna roll into this little outro even more. This is wild. Wild. The final track is called Walk On By. You got this bridge. I feel like nobody's caring, everybody's scared. Is there anybody here? I feel like everybody's staring, but they don't see me. Am I really by myself? And you couple that into, I love that the final chorus, the chorus takes the bridge and chorus and merges it together. When you walk on by, you've got shades to hide your eyes. I know you're crying, you was dying and the pain inside. I feel like that song, it's just the notion of there she is. There goes the person I actually love who I, I fucked up the relationship and she's gone now. And I know she sees me, but she's wearing her sunglasses. And so, but, and that person being coupled into the idea of being now just another stranger in the world that walks on by, that doesn't see you, that doesn't care about you, that kind of thing. Huh. Huh. I don't cry. It's sad, but shit happens sometimes. It's harder finding happiness or family time in the loop. It'd be the beauty with the tragic behind. No one has a clue what we had to do to survive. We're brothers, so it's nothing new when we argue and fight. It's us against the world till the world unites. Sometimes I hear your voice, but ain't no one in sight. When you walk... When you talk, words cut like a knife, but I don't cry. Huh. Huh. Well, thematically, I'm not certain. It seems to revolve around the idea of, of playful relationships, fun relationships, and then, you know, breaking up and then realizing I broke up with somebody who I actually do love, and then really going through an actual heartbreak. But even then, I'm not entirely certain. But... So fun to listen to. <laughs> so fun to listen to. Especially that last, I got to put a heart there on Walk On By. Because I love all the guitar work that's happening. The light, there's even light bass lines in there. Light drum. I mean, it's just musically, the production is so good. So good. This is one of those albums where, I mean, Anderson's singing so well. And the music is so good. It doesn't fucking matter what they say. I mean, they could just be saying complete gibberish, but it sounds so good, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter. You know, this album has been out for a couple weeks. Hasn't really, it looks like it hasn't really gotten a lot of attention in terms of like views. I guess some people are checking it out. That's one thing that's neat with Genius. You can, you can pull up, let's see, what's the biggest streamed one? Where I go, this is it. So not a whole lot of people are checking out the lyrics. In terms of the numbers, you know, there's one big hit, Where I Go. That's got 35 million streams. And then the rest, for the most part, a million, a little bit under, a little bit over. That's about it. Which is kind of a shame, you know? Kind of a shame, because beautiful, just beautiful album. God, it's so gorgeous on the ears. Um, I was going to say I want to watch the videos, because I think there's one by the beach. But before, you know, that's Patreon only, so I'll, I'll finish up closing thoughts here. But the, the beach thing, I'm very, very interested to see that video because if, if the video is on the beach, I mean, this to me, this is beach music, man. There's a group I like. They're called Little Hurricanes. It's a couple out of San Diego, California, and they just have this ability to make their music sound like you're in San Diego. Beautiful weather, the sun is out, you're on the beach. I mean, they, the music they make just feels like that. And this album exists in the same space for me. It just feels like that. So I'm actually really excited to check out these music videos. There are three. And, and watch it in that setting because I, I feel like it's going to blend together so well. <laughs> so well. Um, I guess that's it. Look at my poor eyes. You can tell I'm tired. <laughs> it happens. It's okay. It's okay. It happens. My, I feel my mood is very different, though. You know, earlier I was like, oh, I just want to, like, soak in all this loud, heavy sound and not, like, 
I don't know. I don't know why that works for me, but it does. But this was this was a wonderful turn. Hearing the hearing the production, man, knowledge, bro, fucking killed it. Killed it. Anderson too. I mean, these two together are fantastic. They do have a couple of albums. What is it? I think Le- Yes Lod is another one that they have. Uh, yeah, that's one too. That one's fuck. That's eight eight years old already. Wow. I'll have to check that one out someday as well. But this was great. This was great. I'm glad I sat down with this. I was I wasn't sure at first. People were mentioning it to me. They probably gotta check this out. It's really good. Really good. Okay. All right. Sure. 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 And then you know I missed the release window, and so it's like well okay. But yeah. Glad I sat down with it. Very cool. Let's get into the music videos. I want to see this one with the beach. I just want to be on the beach, basically. I want to listen to this music and be on the beach. That's all. <laughs> That's all there is to it.